to ensure our fisheries system is up to date and working as fairly and as efficiently as it can, I have directed my officials to begin scoping options for an operational review. The long term aim is to del deliver greater net value to all sectors, commercial, recreational and customary, while enhancing the sustainability of our fisheries. I want to be clear that this program of work is about refreshing and improving our fisheries management system, not replacing it. This operational review will help strengthen public confidence and social license for fishing and foster community support by providing opportunities for involvement in local area management. This is a high level review and as such it won't be getting into the detail of things like bag limits and quotas. The current sustainability rounds and other work programs that MPI does will continue. The review will not undermine existing rights and interests of commercial, customary and recreational fishers, treaty settlements or core elements of the QMS. As the first step in the process over the next few weeks, officials from MPI will be contacting stakeholders to seek your views on the strengths and weaknesses of the current system and opportunities and priorities for change. MPI will collate the feedback received from all stakeholders, recreational, commercial and customary, into a report which will be fed back to all. Decisions on next steps will be made once I have considered the feedback received. Possible options include changes to the fisheries management processes within the current legislation, regulatory change or amendments to the Fisheries Act. I hope you take the opportunity to share your views and I look forward to your positive engagement. As you know, MPI is well underway with its first principles review of all of its cost recovery systems and my officials appreciate the constructive dialogue that they've had with your industry. New Zealand's marine area is becoming an increasingly busy place, balancing the rights and interests of all New Zealanders on and off and in the water is a fairly challenging one. Reconciling commercial, recreational and customary fisheries while maintaining healthy ecosystems and protecting biodiversity is a difficult balance to strike. The proposed marine protected areas framework will be an important tool uh, in this. We are proud of our record in advancing 10 new marine reserves last year in areas like the sub-Antarctic islands, the west coast, Akara and Kaikoura. We are now well advanced on the work of the new Marine Protected Areas Act, which will make provisions for establishing the two proposed recreational fishing parks. We'll be seeking comment on a discussion paper on the way forward later this year. This is a complex task with so many different agencies and stakeholders involved, but I'm confident we'll be able to deliver a reform that will match New Zealand's strong heritage of leadership in marine management. Of course, adding value to our seafood exports will take more than just improving the regulatory system. This year's theme, of, as I've already alluded to, of adding value aligns very neatly with the government's goal of doubling the value of our primary sector exports by 2025. Adding value to the seafood products we export is crucial because we can't just double the number of fish that we extract from the ocean. As a nation, we produce enough food across our primary sectors to feed about 40 million people. And we need to ensure that we are targeting the wealthiest consumers in the world. As a government, we're committed to working with industry to find new ways to increase growth and access to new markets. You'll all be aware of the Precision Seafood Harvesting PGP program. It's a great example of this collaboration. And I know that Dave Woods is going to be leading a session on that later on today. This joint program between industry and government is showing real promise and it has the potential to transform the way that uh, the world operates in fishing methods. It will enable you to produce a premium quality product 
with greater sustainability benefits as well. There's also the technology developed through SPAT NZ, which is another exciting PGP program showing great promise for growing mussels. This program aims to deliver the quality and quantity of New Zealand's highest aquaculture earner and by the mid-2020s could see exports increase to $80 million. Earlier this year I was privileged to be able to open SPAT NZ state-of-the-art pilot hatchery in Nelson which will be key to their research team's effort to provide more reliable and faster growing mussel spat than we have currently. I'm delighted that these efforts of these two PGP programs have been widely recognised, respectively gaining the New Zealand Innovation Council's Innovator of the Year Award and the Marine Farmer Association R&D Award. Congratulations. Maintaining and building market access is another key way that the government can support the seafood sector. Free trade agreements like the TPP can ensure that New Zealand exporters are competing on a level playing field. Strong opportunities exist for developing new markets and increasing market share in established markets. China continues to hold vast potential for New Zealand exporters and tapping into the rise of the growing wealth of the Chinese consumers and their growing middle class provides a key opportunity. Trade in seafood and products is now duty free under the China FTA and a very important and growing market for you. The Korean FTA, our most recent agreement, will also provide benefits for muscle exporters who will benefit from some preferential access at a zero duty under the permanent tariff quota. Our trade agreement with Chinese Taipei is also phasing out duties on the majority of fish and seafood products over four years. So some good news there and what the government is striving to do, opening up new market access opportunities for you all. New Zealand has a natural advantage. The world wants our top quality premium seafood, as the Prime Minister alluded to last year at your conference, and recognises the New Zealand brand. For fisheries, that brand is built upon fisheries management using the best available scientific research. This is a real opportunity to enhance this and add further value by establishing a strong and safe brand New Zealand for our premium seafood products. MPI has traditionally provided assurances to other countries that market access requirements are met and largely their commercial assurances for gaining a premium market position to you, the industry. Through the new assurances program, MPI is helping New Zealand companies to leverage our natural advantage and provide commercial assurances to foreign businesses once mandatory legal requirements have been met. I invite you to continue to engage with MPI to discuss the ideas and types of opportunities you see for such assurances. The Snapper One area continues to be one of the most valued fisheries in the country for all our sectors. The Snapper One monitoring project, trialling the use of electronic monitoring on the fleet, has been a great opportunity for industry and MPI to work together to address this. I welcome the support that the fishing industry has shown to responsibly address sustainability concerns in this way, which will enhance New Zealand's reputation as being a sustainable source of seafood. The wider rollout of the vessel monitoring systems for over 70 vessels is a further positive development. Further camera monitoring will lead to achieve the 100% observer coverage of the Snapper One fleet. The work in the monitoring space has been very forward thinking, but there is more to do in the snapper fishery. I look for industry to be equally forward thinking in their work on the snapper plan, which will drive the future of this important fishery. <coughs> Building on the lessons learned from Snapper One, MPI is developing a proposal to establish computerised, integrated electronic monitoring and reporting system. This will greatly improve cost efficiency and transparency of fisheries management for the benefit of industry and all stakeholders within the sector. 
Good progress is also being made in the Marlborough Sounds. The Blue Cod Management Group has had a favourable response to their consultation on proposed changes to fishing management measures in the area. A primary aim of the review is to create rules that are simple, understandable and fair. Final decisions will be made later this year and I expect the new regulations to be in place for the season opening on the 20th of December this year. As Minister, I've also closely been watching the steady growth of aquaculture. In a time where global wild captures fisheries are reaching peak production, the contribution of New Zealand aquaculture could not be more important. The UN Food and Agriculture <coughs> Organisation projects that fish consumption will continue to increase, particularly in Asia and other areas, and that aquaculture production for human consumption already surpasses capture fisheries. As a government, we are committed to the aquaculture strategy and helping the industry reach their aspiration of growing to more than a billion dollars by 2025. Aquaculture export revenue is expected to grow by 19% to 2019, lifting its total share of seafood export earnings to 28%. And Bruce, you might be interested uh, to know that aquaculture is one of our four national policy statements we are keen to advance. I'm well aware that industry has concerns about uncertain and inefficient regulatory planning frameworks governing aquaculture. This is a difficult area in which regional councils have struggled to provide space for the growth of this industry, which offers real opportunity for regional development. My officials are working with other government agencies and councils to address this. Our objective is to give clearer national direction and improve certainty for investment and reconsenting, which is hugely important to your industry, Bruce. Space for aquaculture is no less busy than wild fisheries, and aquaculture depends on the trust that it has with local communities. So I applaud the efforts that industry is undertaking to improve its social licence. In particular, industry has established the Social Licence Working Group in cooperation with the MPI to improve how the sector engages with stakeholders. On that note, I was pleased to take part in the signing of the new space regional aquaculture agreements with 13 iwi from Marlborough, Tasman and Auckland regions last month in Parliament. The agreements help cement the partnership between the Crown and iwi and recognise the importance of iwi as vital contributors to the seafood sector. The implementation of these agreements will increase iwi participation and share in New Zealand aquaculture. Importantly, iwi will be involved in aquaculture wherever it occurs in New Zealand. Finally, to finish, I would like to reaffirm my support for your conference themes of sustainability and adding value. They are key to all of the topics that I have covered today. They will be fundamental to realising the great opportunities the New Zealand seafood sector has for positive and sustainable growth going forward. I am convinced that together government and industry can achieve a doubling of the value of our exports by 2025. Increasing volume alone will not get us there, but continuing the New Zealand seafood sector's tradition of innovation and world-leading fisheries will indeed help. Thank you very much.